Alright, hello guys. In today's video, we're going to be talking about another nor'easter, obviously, for New England and the northeastern United States. This one's going to be from the 16th through the 18th, and this one might be a little bit more widespread than our first one that we had a few days back. But before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content, and also make sure to check out the links in the description for our social medias. Now, we're looking at our little surface map here that I drew up. I'm going to start making more of these because I think they look really cool, and it kind of gets the point across. So I, I just wanted to go ahead and make it make one of these surface maps. You can see the low pressure system is going to start to really develop off of the Del Marva and then head in mostly a northerly direction, but in a little bit of an easterly direction too, and hit around the Cape Cod, Nantucket, and also the Martha's Vineyard regions of Massachusetts right there. So that's where the low pressure system is going to travel directly over, and that's going to bring most of the effects to Boston and some other areas like Rhode Island, Connecticut, Long Island, and then coastal Maine as well, where it's going to kind of try to approach maybe Bar Harbor and then ride the coast back eastward. Now, this is a few days out, obviously, so the track could vary quite a little bit. It could be further east, could be further west, but right now this seems to be the most likely outcome. Canadian model and European model seem pretty sure of a track pretty similar to this, so I'm going with this as the most likely track for this storm. Now, here was our last nor'easter. Here was the total precipitation that we got from that one. You can see this one was a lot more exclusive to New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Rhode Island alike. It was a southern New England special, that's what we'd call it, especially in the wintertime when only these areas would get snow. But it was mostly, well, ultimately it was only a rain event here. And you can see that in those pinks and red colors, that's where we got an inch to four inches of rain. It looks like somewhere in between Cape Cod and Boston there. I forget what that area is called. Uh, but we have had maybe about three and a half to four inches of rainfall there. So it was quite a major rain event for a lot of you out there in Massachusetts and a major wind, of, wind event as well. So that one verified quite nicely. We did have a pretty decent nor'easter exclusively for you guys. But again, this one's going to be a lot more widespread than that one was. So let's get right into it. We're looking at our surface map and basically this is precipitation and your pressures and everything going on here. So we're going to be looking at the GFS here and you can see by the 14th, so this is tomorrow, we do have some precipitation building out in the Atlantic there, but that's not actually our nor'easter. We're going to start to see our nor'easter develop in the Gulf states, and this is usually where nor'easters start to develop, Miller A's at least. We start to see them really pick up, sometimes even in Nebraska, Kansas, Oklahoma, sometimes we see them dip down from that area, and then sometimes we see them come from the Gulf and kind of come up and then head up the East Coast. So we're going to see this one come up. You can see by the October 15th, Tuesday morning, you can see heavy precipitation there from Texas through into Alabama, and this is our developing nor'easter. This is the beginning of it all. Now, by the 16th, 12Z, you can see we do have a merging low pressure system. We see a low pressure system there over the Great Lakes, and then we see our low pressure system that's just offshore of the Carolinas. These two are going to merge, and that's what's really going to cause this one to be really widespread and quite intense, actually. Let's move on to the 17th, and you can see they've pretty much taken a merge. Now, the thing about merging low pressure systems like this is sometimes they don't fully merge. Sometimes it's just two low pressure systems that head side by side up the coast. And that's really what we see happen here. But by later on the 17th, you can see that we do actually have our low pressure system that is in the Atlantic fully taking over here, becoming the more dominant low pressure system. As it's hitting Nova Scotia and coastal Maine there, it's going to be kind of at the tail end by the time it's fully taken over. But that's a 979 millibar low pressure system. That's quite the strong nor'easter, guys. This one is actually... Quite the intense nor'easter, if you do ask me. Now, as we move on to the 18th, you can see it's fully up there, well into Canada, and pretty intense low pressure system, but this one's going to curve back into Canada, bringing a lot of our friends up north some heavy rain and snow up there. Now, here's your total precipitation through this whole nor'easter, according to the GFS. I'm going to have my own rainfall forecast and wind forecast at the end of the video, but this is according to the GFS. We do see in these blue colors half an inch to two inches of rain falling. Now, here's your snowfall according to the GFS, and you can see for some of the Adirondacks and White Mountains, we do actually have some snowfall there, some dustings being taking place for these regions. So this isn't going to be purely a rain event. Now, the European model does have interior Maine and interior uh, 
New Hampshire getting quite a bit of snow, actually approaching one inches in the interior main region. So that's why you're going to see me showing at the beginning on my surface map showing pinks and purples because some models are actually showing quite a bit of snow and snow mixing in with this one. And then some like this one only have mountaintops getting it. So I'm just going to go with some pinks and purples and just show the fact that we could see some mixing at times with this one for quite a bit of areas. Here's your wind forecast from the GFS. And you can see in those greens, we're looking at 20 to maybe 28 knot winds. So those are going to be pretty exclusive for Cape Cod and Martha's Vineyard and as well as Nantucket. So we're going to see a lot of those areas get the heavier of the winds. Now this is on the 17th. Let's move on to later on the 17th as the slow pressure system heads further north into New England. And you can see those greens try to move on shore to some areas, but never really getting there. Uh, but by the time we're uh, at 12Z, on the October 17th. So this is morning time on Thursday. We do have some of those greens really getting close to Boston and Portland, Maine, areas like that. So this could be quite the windy event as well as Long Island getting some of those greens. So, I mean, you're at 20 knot winds. That's pretty intense. So might be quite the windy event. Now I did want to show you the Canadian model because the Canadian model is different. Again, I told you guys, you probably noticed that that storm did not take the track I showed it to take on the GFS. The GFS is just the one that I usually show the most. But on the Canadian model, here's where our low, our low pressure system is located on Thursday, early, early morning on October 17th. We have a 975 millibar low pressure system in between Boston and Cape Cod there, bringing very heavy rain to eastern Massachusetts and eastern Connecticut as well as eastern Long Island. Probably very, very intense winds as well for these regions. So this would be a much, much more intense outlook here. So we'll have to see what happens. But the, the European certainly agrees. And here's your wind. You can see the greens are on shore for most of Long Island, Connecticut, Rhode Island, Massachusetts, New Hampshire, and Maine. So we definitely have 20 knot winds plus according to this one. And a lot of yellows moving on shore, meaning 30 knot winds. And reds for Martha's Vineyard, Nantucket, and southern Massachusetts there indicating 40 knot winds plus, and maybe even a little bit of purples there for Nantucket and Martha's Vineyard, meaning 50 knot winds plus, which is, that's getting really, really intense, guys. So this could be quite the windy event if it's just a little bit further west than the GFS is showing. Now, here's going to be my precipitation forecast, starting off with nothing on the screen. Let's add our first layer here, the, the under one inch to one inch mark here. You can see everywhere on this northeast map has under an inch to an inch of rain falling. So basically that just means anything to an inch of rain. Uh, it's kind of confusing. Now let's add our one to two inch layer here and you can see a lot of New England and then even down through New Jersey, coastal New Jersey and into the Delmarva, we actually do have one inches to two inches falling, most of Maine as well. And then most of Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, Connecticut, Rhode Island, all of these areas looking to clear the one inch mark there. Now let's add our third and final layer. This is the two to three inch layer. And I think this is going to be the most likely region to see two inches plus. So from Long Island on shore to Eastern Connecticut, all of Rhode Island, and then Eastern Massachusetts, Eastern New Hampshire, and then that Southwestern Maine region. So Portland, Boston, Providence, all of these cities are going to be involved with this two inch plus mark going to be the heaviest of the rain for the storm, I believe. Especially if the storm tracks over Cape Cod, I think this would be the bullseye for the rainfall. Now our wind forecast, let's add our first layer here. This is our 30 mile per hour gust region. You can see from Holton down through Bangor, Portland, Boston, New York City, Philadelphia, and almost Washington DC there. All of us are in that 30 mile per hour gust region. This could extend further west or it could be a little bit less, but this seems to be the safest bet according to the models right now. And then we have a second layer here, 40 mile per hour gusts seem to be likely for Boston, Providence, and Cape Cod, Nantucket, uh, Martha's Vineyard. All these regions look to possibly get 40 mile per hour gusts throughout this one. The reason I'm showing gusts instead of actual sustained winds is because I feel like gusts is what's actually going to cause a lot of damage in situations like this, not the sustained winds. And I don't want people to underestimate this one just because the sustained winds are only going to be, you know, 20 mile per hour. That doesn't mean you won't see 40 mile per hour gusts, which again, is, a, is you know double the amount of wind. So big, big difference there from 20 miles per hour to 40 miles per hour. That's why I decided to go with gusts instead of sustained winds on that one. Now, let me go know what you guys thought about this video. I tried a lot of new things on this one. First off, I made a lot of my own maps for this video with the rainfall, uh, the, the surface map that we showed in the beginning, and then even the wind forecast. So let me know if you guys like 
me showing my own maps that I make more or if you'd rather me just show the models from some websites. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys later in the next video. Make sure to share this with your friends and family on social medias if you think they'll find it useful or if they live in the regions affected by this Nor'easter. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you guys in the next one.